Before we hear about how you got home, can you tell us a little bit more about March 15th? <clears throat> March 15th, yeah. March 15th was the, the final push in the uh, European war where the, uh, <clears throat> the armed forces had been building up and getting ready to put an offensive uh, on to the Germans. And uh, our particular sector was uh, just about the furthest south sector on the, um, the Maginot line, which was the uh, French uh, defense line. There were two lines physically that were built, a Maginot line on the French and a Siegfried line on the German side, and they faced each other maybe, oh, 500 yards apart, depending on where you were. Sometimes they were closer together, sometimes further apart. but. They were just, <clears throat> they would, they would have cannons and stuff uh, in the background throwing shells at each other, but nobody was running across to, to, to fight, you know, personally. But this was going to be the final push that was going <clears> to <throat> get us going. And what we were trying to do was to go around, uh, around the southern end of, of both of the, the, uh, lines and um, so March 15th was the day the attack was supposed to start. It was a coordinated attack along the entire uh, western front <clears throat> and we started out at oh, four or five in the morning and um, we had a tank that was uh, leading us and we got up to the top of this hill and there was a we knew that there was a um, Cave. Well, it wasn't a cave, it was foxhole, a very large foxhole where people stand up and walk around in it on the back side of the hill that we were coming up. So we had to go up to the top and then go over and try and route them out of there so we could continue down and then keep, keep going across the, uh, the hill and do our part of the fighting. And... Uh, we got up to the top of the hill and our tank ran, ran over a couple of uh, uh, explosives that were in, in the, uh, well, not really a roadway, but it was a trail. And it blew the, blew the uh, treads off the tank so the tank couldn't go anywhere. So that really kind of stopped it because the tank is what was going to be able to go right up to get at them. <clears throat> and stopped us for the moment, and then we started getting shelled with, uh, primarily with, uh, maybe you call the high, high shells. Uh, mortars. Mortars. Thank you. Mortars. And um, they were coming down and hitting the trees and uh, show, um, dropping fragments down on us, and uh, the fellow that was. Well, just just where my uh, table in the kitchen is, maybe. Shot right in the head. Uh, Hinojosa, uh, I forget his first name, but he was killed there, just just getting ready to shoot. So it, it was a, a scary time with the, the shells coming in and uh, the people being being shooting and there's a big write-up on one of the fellows who uh, just made up his mind he was not going to stand there and get shot at and he uh, jumped up and ran forward with uh, grenades and uh, <clears throat> automatic rifle and um, uh, overcut, overcame these guys and then we all got up and followed him and uh, took took that particular defense, and then that that was it. Then we got down to the bottom of the hill and we went up through a small town. It was just a really a farmer's type town, and most of the buildings were on fire. And I don't know whether maybe one of the other 
of our groups had already attacked them, but the, the Germans were in those buildings, but then they turned tail and ran. And then the word came out, that was, that was most of the day and the night. And the following morning, the word came out, grab whatever you can, we're heading for the Rhine. And a couple of the other guys that I uh, <clears throat> worked with hopped on to the, the back of a tank and I followed them. And we went whizzing, whizzing along uh, the, about, well, tanks didn't go more than about 15, 20 miles an hour at most, but hanging on for dear life. And uh, we went through our woods the one area, one of the fellows wasn't paying attention, and we came through a low, low-hanging branch, and he, and somebody said, hey, "Branch!" and he turned around and saw the branch coming, and he had to grab the branch, and he was hanging up there about twenty or twenty-five feet because the tanks were pretty high. And the tank had to stop, <laughs> we had, to, uh, had to back up and <laughs> pull him down from the, the tree. But then we got down to a, we were going down toward a, a, a crossroad, and obviously they had the crossroad zeroed in, so they could hit the shells and knew they would um, hit anything that went through the crossroad. So we had to take a, a roundabout trip to get, get past that. But then it just opened up, the Germans ran and the first thing we knew it knew we were in uh oh I'm not gonna think of the name, but it was one of the main cities on the Rhine, on the southern Rhine, and it was absolutely amazing. The city was leveled. Wow. There was nothing standing except a church right in the middle with a beautiful tree next to it, it looked like it was untouched. Hmm. And uh, it was amazing. And But we went right past and I went across the Rhine. And then we went to, gee, I can't think of the name of that city either. It was a large, large city, which it was our uh, regiment to uh, capture. Is that the city Bitch or? Bitch? No. Okay. No, Bitch was early in the in the, the war, back when we were first in Germany, mm -hmm. along the eastern, or the western <coughs> part of uh, Germany and France. Actually, that was a French city. And, um, uh, no, this was another one. I, I can't think of the name, but at any rate, that's the one where I heard uh, this gun shoot a shell and felt the air of, of the shell go by my ear. Right. And uh, it probably was 20 feet away, but the, the air was very obvious. It passed my ear and it exploded behind me somewhere. But then we had, we had to cross the Necker River uh, on pontoon boats, and uh, well, actually, they were rubber rubber boats, big rubber boats, and uh, under smoke screens, and that was kind of interesting. But we got across, and there was no problem without getting sunk or anything, because they they couldn't see what we were doing with the. We could hardly see what we were doing ourselves with all the smoke, and. Uh, all the bridges that crossed the Necker had been uh, obliterated. They were just hanging. You went down the bridge right into the water, which was not much help. So that, uh, that as far as I know, was the end of the battle. Um, the, um, the city was being defended by uh, a whole bunch of 88 guns the Germans had located at the top of the mountain beyond the city. And they had everything in the city zeroed in so they could 
they could pick out certain buildings or certain intersections and uh, once the city was taken then <clears throat> moved on up the mountain and took over the took over the guns and that was it for them so that's about about the end of the war part <clears throat>